Hello, welcome to class. Today we will begin a series on the barriers to equitable access to healthcare. Because this topic is so vast, today we'll start with an introduction and then we'll move on to four other topics in the series to really dive in. So the key objectives for this lecture today are define equity, define and explain health equity, link health disparities and health equity, and explain the relationship between the two, identify social determinants, explain the connection between social determinants and barriers to equitable access to care, identify the barriers to equitable access to care, and reflect and discuss your role as an allied health professional in addressing these barriers. Apply your gained knowledge to the topics within this lecture series. So let's start by simply defining equity. Equity is defined as justice according to natural right, specifically freedom from bias or favoritism. It's important here to understand that simply defining equity isn't going to help us really understand the issues and that we need to look at the inequities and address those in order to come back around to equitable health. So what is health equity? Um, Healthy People 2020 organization defines it as attainment of the highest level of health for all people. And throughout this module, we are going to be viewing several articles and resources that will help us to gain a broader definition and to really understand what health equity is. Health equity and health disparities are closely linked to each other. They're closely linked topics and they are separate terms, but you're going to see throughout this series of lectures how intertwined and closely related that they are. Here you'll see three figures that display social determinants. So social determinants as defined here are the conditions in which you live, learn, work, and age, and these affect your health. For example, your general social economic status, uh, your environmental conditions, your race, your culture, your gender, um, safe housing, healthy food, these would all be social determinants of health. Okay, before I go to the next slide, I want you to get a scratch piece of paper and I want you to make a little brainstorm web of what barriers you can think of um, to equitable access to health care. And uh, think about these social determinants and think about what we've learned about the definition so far and just make a little web really quick. Okay. Did you have any of these barriers listed on your web? If not, that's okay, because we're all just starting to discover what these barriers are. But hold on to that scratch piece of paper because we're going to be uh, using it and growing our knowledge in this topic through our brainstorming. Now let me introduce you to Rebecca George. She is a UC Davis School of Medicine MD candidate for the class of 2023, and she's also a past Sierra College attendee. You will be seeing just an excerpt of her interview, but it will be provided in your module this week for you to preview the entire interview if you choose, as well as you'll be seeing other excerpts throughout the series. So the first question I have is, what do you think are the main barriers to equitable health care that we face today? Great question. So when I think about um, equity in health care, I think about equity in three things. Um, it's equity in terms of access, treatment, and outcomes. Um, and I think that the reason that we have these differences um, in access, treatment, and outcomes is due to underlying inequities 
um, in our society. And these are really what we often call the social determinants of health, which are disparities that result from avoidable systemic um, injustices that have social and economic policies and practices that create these barriers so that people aren't um, getting the same access, treatment, and outcomes, but they're also not starting from the same level in terms of their, their just basic health. Um, so I would, I would call the main barrier those social determinants of health. And these are really the differences in circumstances in which people are born, grow up, live, work, um, and in which we age. And these are things that, um, you know, we're very familiar with, and especially in this moment that we're in right now, I think are becoming even more um, relevant and visible. These are differences due to gender, race, sex, socioeconomic status, education, um, ability, geography, whether you live in a rural, rural, urban, suburban kind of environment, and many, many other things. Um, and all of this kind of stacks on top of the fact that people don't have, um, they can't get that first step in to getting access to healthcare. So I would include um, universal healthcare lack as an, as an additional barrier. And then the last question I have for you is what are some of the most important action sets that we as healthcare providers or future healthcare providers can take and start taking to address these barriers to access and, and what can we do? It, this is a great question. Um, and this is a question I've really been thinking about a lot myself yeah. over this last year. Um, and I would say that this list is certainly incomplete, <laughs> but it's a good starting place. Um, and I'd say that first we have a responsibility to be educating ourselves. So learning about um, the social justice issues that are relevant that we've talked about and learning, beginning to learn about our own implicit biases, whether those are um, racial, gendered, class-based, ethnicity-based, immigration status, all of these things, and really starting to learn to practice cultural humility in those areas. Uh, the second thing is really working to uplift and advocate for underrepresented groups in healthcare. So that means um, if you're somebody who is an underrepresented group in healthcare and you're here listening to this and interested in becoming a part of the workforce for healthcare, then you are already doing something that is a radical act that is changing this. So thank you. Um, and I would say also beginning to educate yourself about what is universal healthcare and what are some of these other, um, or if it's not universal healthcare, what are other you know, policies that are laws that are really going to affect the way you're able to practice care, what that means, who gets to have care, who doesn't get to have care. Um, and last, I would say really get out there and vote. Once you've understood, you know, what are these policies? What are, you know, um, these laws? Who are the people who are really doing things that are going to support the health of you and your communities? You know, put that into action. And as a future healthcare worker, your voice has a disproportionately stronger impact than others. Um, and it's really important to take responsibility for that additional privilege. Um, that especially for people for underrepresented groups, it, it might not feel um, comfortable at first recognizing. Um, but voting is important, contacting your local officials is important, your state officials, um, holding our representatives accountable for making sure the health of our communities is coming first. You will see more of Rebecca's interview and hear input from other local healthcare professionals in our following lecture series. The content will include healthcare access and policy programs, barriers to prevent equitable access and treatment, cultural competent care, and taking action.
addressing disparities. I'll see you online. I can't wait to discuss this further. Have a great day. Bye-bye.